Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today is Booklist Thursday. Booklist Thursday is something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of book thoughts, recommendation, book ideas, something bookish related. And today we are taking inspiration from the upcoming Flag Day holiday and we are going to talk about books set in different countries. Which I surprisingly had quite a few. I have a lot to choose from. So I've got five. Um, let's see. I've read three and a half of them. <laughs> Not even. We'll barely say that. Um, but I'm going to talk about them and let you know kind of what country they're from, my thoughts on them, all of that fun stuff. So I'm going to start with the book I'm actually current re currently reading is Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verges. Verges? Um, this is a book that I was doing a little fun little unhaul earlier this year and you guys insisted that I keep this and give it a whirl. So I'm actually buddy reading this um, and it's going a little slow, but it is a book that you just have to marinate on, I think, um, but I'm really liking it. So this follows um, a set of twin brothers who were born in Ethiopia, um, orphaned by their mother's death and their father's disappearance. Um, and they're, you're kind of, we're learning about their mother right now um, and like they were just born. So we're, we're just into it, but I'm really liking it. The writing is gorgeous. I am so intrigued by the story and so curious by the story. I'm definitely into it, but I feel like this is going to be a slow burn for me. Just going to take me some time, which is totally okay. I'm alright with that. But Cutting for Stone, Ethiopia. Next one I think I've talked about quite a few times lately. I just, I think I need to just put this book away for a little bit. <laughs> but I still can't talk about it enough. It's Unbroken by Laura Hildebrand. Um, this is the true story of Louis Zamperini, who... Um, was an Olympic runner and then joined the Air Force. He got shot down and was taken in as a prisoner of war by the Japanese. So a lot of the book is definitely spent in Japan during World War II. Very interesting. Again, such a good book. Awesome on audio too. Um, the next book that I read was The Dry by Jane Harper. This takes place in, in Australia. So this is a bit of a mystery to it. So we have um, a federal agent, Aaron Falk, who he hasn't been home in a long time. Him and his father was kind of, they were kind of chased out of town a little bit. So we, the, the whole welcome back thing just isn't there. Um, had no really desire to go home until he finds out that one of his very good friends, Luke, um, is dead along with his entire family. He then gets a random note that said, Luke lied, you lied, be at the funeral. So just like that, he gets swept back up into it and he goes home. Um, again, set in Australia during a drought, so hence the word the dry. Uh, definitely a lot of mystery to this. I flew through this book and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it about four stars, um, but it was also good. I have another book by her. I need to keep reading more by her, that's for sure. Um, the next one is, again, another favorite author of mine, but I was Anastasia, or Anastasia, however you want to say it, by Ariel Lahan. So again, this follows the story around Anastasia Romanoff, so it does take place quite a bit in Russia. It's Ariel Lahan's take on what could have happened with the story. Um, so you're definitely in Russia for a number of it, or a good piece of it, as well as in the United States. So really, really good book. I love how she writes her historical fictions. They're just so intriguing, so intriguing. And this is written in such a unique way. It does take a little time to get to get used to the timeline in which she tells the story, um, but it's fantastic. And the author's note is what just put this book over over the it just oh, over the top for me. It was amazing. And the only book on this pile that I haven't at least read part of. Actually, no, I did start reading a little bit of it. So I have read a few pages of it. But next year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. This has a dual timeline. So we have Havana, Cuba. So that's the country it's set in in 1958. We have Eliza Perez, who's part of Cuba's high society. Um, she's pretty much sheltered from the country's political unrest until she embarks on, a, um, on an affair with a passionate revolutionary. And then we are brought into present day Miami, where Marisol, Eliza's granddaughter, is faced with the duty of kind of taking um, Eliza's ashes back to Cuba to scatter them and kind of coming face to face with what happened why how did how did Eliza end up in Miami and what kind of family history is there there in Cuba so what a beautiful book though right I need to get to this it's well overdue well overdue so that one's set in Cuba so of my five books 
countries I've got. Let's see if I can hold them up. Ethiopia, Japan, Australia, Russia, and Cuba. I feel like I got around country-wise. I think so. But it was really interesting going through my shelves and seeing how many books I do have that are set in, in the different countries. It's pretty cool. So that's all I have for today. Hop over to Sarah's channel, see what books she picked up from different countries that she's either read or hasn't read. I'm not sure. Again, we don't really talk about what we're going to share every book list. So sometimes there's some similarities and most of the time there's not. So hop over to her channel. Link is down below. See what she has to say. Otherwise, comment below, like, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. And I'll see you next week. Bye.